Hey guys, welcome to my Mars Explorer Photoshop tutorial. I'm going to walk you through how I went from this image to this image and all the steps in between, everything I did for my layer compositions, all my lighting, all my effects. Um, hope you like it. Here we go. Alright, here we go. I'm going to walk you guys through my explorer picture that I made from up on Mars. I'll show you a little walkthrough of the layers that we have, uh, how I put all those together, um, blending them, some of the parts that I created, like the these bits here. And yeah. So let's get into it. So if we turn off everything. So on my Instagram story you saw that base picture that I started with and that's this right here. Turn off my smart filters. All right. So how this started was this image right here. And what I did for starters was I knew I was going to use this for Instagram so I took my 4x5 crop, put it honestly I think it was right about there. Um, so we'll get that locked in. All right, there we go. So once I had that, I brought in a couple of other pictures. I had this picture of this uh, asteroid galaxy type deal that I added in and masked a little bit. I didn't want it touching um, any of this over here. So I took that off. Then I added in, what did I do next? I was happy with how the colors went for that, so I just left it. Um, I found that if you go into your filter gallery, if you convert this to 8 bits, then you have access for your smart filters to uh, the filter gallery, and you can add extra fancy effects there. Um, so you go up to filter, filter, gallery, um, and for this soft glow layer that I added, what I used was this diffuse glow um, under the distort section. Turn the graininess down because when the graininess is up it looks awful. Turn the glow to around 10 because that looked nice to me. 10. My phone is ringing. Set my clear amount to 15 because that looked the best and then I was able to pull down my um, opacity of this to 13% because at 100% that's that's too much. Um, so I put that down to 13 now. Nice. So we can toggle that on and off. We can see it gave it a little bit of a pop over there. Um, and did I do anything here? No. So there we've got that. Um, what did I do next? What is this one? Um, call it that. Then... <coughs> so then I found a picture of my car that I liked and I popped in the that, that's the original shot right there. I masked out just the car. I didn't want it covering up my guy, so I masked out my guy. Um, and right now, this is with my color corrections. This is textures. Um, so how I do my color corrections is I have an action that I made for luminosity and saturation check layers. Um, so with my luminosity check layer I can see the like overall brightness of everything and so from there I was able to use my curves to adjust the car to match the background because right here you can see that the wheels and whatnot are too dark 
like the blacks are too black. So I brought those up and changed the um, contrast and everything to match more of the scene. Toggle that off, you can see the effect that had. We'll turn off my saturation. Um, you can see the effect that had right there. My mouse is probably really loud, and I'm probably going to regret that, so I think I'm going to switch to another one. <coughs> So we can toggle that on and off, and then I used my hue saturation adjustment layer and saw that, oh wow, my car is way too uh, desaturated, so I need to make it brighter, more saturated. Um, so I brought up the saturation of the overall image. I'm trying to remember if I did any fine tweaks. No, I think it was just that because I colorized it. I brought the hue over here because that seemed to match better. If I turn this off, that seemed to be the <clears throat> color that matched the best. I brought our saturation in to par with everything else. Because if we turn it up, you can see it gets way brighter than everything else, or too dark. Um, so we put it right there, so it matches real nice. Um, and then the lightness I just left alone, because that doesn't help a whole lot on the Hue saturation ones. Um, so we can see if we turn these off, the car doesn't look quite right there. It fits in much better with the overall colors um, and everything in the picture. So I've got that fixed. I can now get rid of these. <clears throat> At that point, I added in some shadows for the car. This I did later. All right, so car shadow. Here we go. So I then added in these shadows under the car. And what I did for that was I basically just took a pen brush that I have. I just used this <coughs> irregular shape. Let me make a new layer so you can see it. So it's this type of shape. Um, and I just used that to draw out my um, shadow shape that I wanted. And then I added a bit of the blur to it to help it fit in better. Because if we take the blur off, it looks too harsh. That looks nice. I had this down at, no, I don't even remember now. <clears throat> Let's see if we can undo to that point. There we go, point that. Um, and then I added a couple other layers. I just duplicated it and transformed it, um, brought it. Let's duplicate the actual layer itself. So we'll duplicate this one, took my transform, I held shift and clicked and dragged to make it smaller, held control and brought it over here to make it line up more with these. Um, and then had that one blur as well, lined it up a bit better than I did there. Um, so that's how I added these additional smaller, darker ones. And then you can see that overall looks more fitting. It's maybe a little darker than his feet, but I think that's, I left that because the car is bigger, blocks more light. All right, after I got my car put in, what did I do next? Then I color graded the whole thing and I have that in here. So we can see that this is Apparently my crop is off from what I had for my actual image, but it's okay. Um, what is my okay. Let's do this in, let's do... Alright, so what I did was, that looked way too flat for me, so I took a, one of my gradient maps. Um, I started with this right here, and I didn't like the more purple, I wanted the more orange color. So I took um, our hue value here, 29, and then if you come over to this one, go to color, go to hue, type in 29 plus 180 degrees, because you've got a whole circle of color. I want the one that's directly across from it, that's 180 degrees away from the other color. So I type in my 180, and it takes me to the um, preferred complement. 
of it. And I just left the saturation and the brightness the same as what that um, default purple color was. So that's how I got that right there. If you set this to soft light, it looks nice. If you do normal, it's a little too much. You can see that's the full, full effect right there. We'll go to soft light. And that's our difference. I turned down our opacity to 40%. Um, and you can see the effect that has right there. I added some curves to give it a little more contrast, um, a little more color contrast too. So I took the reds up, reds down. Um, greens I just brought down a bit overall. I'll take some of the green out to give it more of a purple tinge. And then the blues I brought down a lot in the sky and then brought them up in the shadows a bit. So you can see the effect that that has there. And this is a much more dramatic curve than I would normally do. Um, but there's that. I added a color lookup table. I like color lookup tables. I think this is the, yeah, horror blue. And then I applied this one to only the darker parts. So you can see here, it's going to affect this range from right there up to fading from here to there. So you can see if I push these here, it applies to the entire image. If I take it down, it starts taking it away from the bright spots. Um, so I had this somewhere around. You hold Alt and you can split this and it makes that um, step off a little more gradual. And I wanted it to stay out of the brighter spots a bit. So I brought it down here left it right around there, so it applies from this area to over there. Um, and so that was more my toning the dark colors, and then I toned the brights with this crisp warm color lookup table. And this one I did the same exact thing, I hit Alt and I drug this one all the way over. So it's a very smooth gradient, covering the complete brights all the way down to a a very small amount touching the darks, as you can see right there. Um, so that's that one, you can see the full effect with that. I don't like at all how white the car was, so then I masked out just that. What I did for this was I went over to my channels. No, just kidding. What I did for that was I went to select um, with my car layer selected went to select color range, click the color here, hit the plus button, and then basically just colored around this whole area until I found a nice color that I liked. If you go down here to the preview selection, you can see what is selected. So I just went in here and added these, these bits of colors. until it was more or less where I wanted it. Then I hit OK and it took this selection here with these white parts being what's selected. Um, and I then took that selection, hit select a mask, and then it masked it for me. And then I just erased or painted with black over all of the areas that I did not want um, impacted. So then we ended up with just these bits of areas being affected. And I did this as a lighter gray. It was initially black. Um, so then it wasn't being affected at all by this. So then the grill was still a bit more orange, like this original color. Um, so I turned it like 50% gray to have it included partly um, in my desaturation. And what I did here was I just brought the saturation down overall 60 points. And that really helped clean up the color of the car and made the brights here match better with his backpack and whatnot. Um, then I added in this cool little truck back here. Um, we can see that right here, right there. It's a pretty snazzy truck with some missiles on it. Um, I masked it by itself, by selecting this layer, select, and then subject, and it did a fantastic job of picking just the truck. Um, so then I just selected that, 
mask that out, turn on a filter to blur it to match the background. Um, no. So I had the truck and then I decided I want to add depth of field to help separate everything out. So I took um, an additional layer of this guy here and then took the whole background. This is going to take a bit for it to render this. Took the whole background and unsharpened it, did some noise reduction, um, and then added the blur gallery filter to it. And this is the field blur. And so what this did was it added a nice, I'll open it up here, gradual depth of field to the whole image. So up here, it's a little bit blurry, three pixels. Right here, it's not blurry at all, it's zero pixels. So you can see like right at the feet where everything should be in focus, it's in focus. And then back here, as you go from like this area to this area, it increases the blur up to nine. Um, and we can turn that on and off to see the effect that has. It's affecting the backpack a bit. It looks fine to me. Um, and I liked how that helped the car pop out. So I just left that there. Blurred the truck to make it match with the blur of the depth of field. Um, this second one here was masked to show just my guy. So then he wouldn't be having his face caught in that blur zone <laughs> from this one here. So I have him standing on top of that, um, nice and solid. Then for the truck, let me turn off this blur here so you can see it better. Um, it originally did not look like it fit well at all. Like that was more or less the um, original shot of the truck. This has the color grade on it so it doesn't look quite right. There we go. Um, so I used this um, like flat color here to color match that. And what I did was I took my truck, I added a curves adjustment layer and brought down um, my brightness over here because our light source is coming from back over here. So I wanted this side to be darker, the front and whatnot to be lighter. So I darkened that bit. I took this here, did another dark curves, did it again to make it even darker, brightened up these brighter spots. Um, and you can see even with that, that already matches a lot better. Um, then we added a bit of a fade to it, to the whole thing. Um, I just decreased, flattened out the contrast of essentially the whole image, the little truck image. Um, did some hue saturation adjustments and you can see those starting to take effect uh, more on the windshield and these brighter bits here. Did another one. It's a color lookup table to try and match it a bit better. And that got me really close. I added another color lookup table. Um, that seemed to get it really spot on. The shadows are maybe a little bit different than over there, so I added a bit of um, tone curve to try and help it fit a bit better. And then with the blur, we get that. Um, so that is our truck. And I didn't add a shadow on that because it's too far away. To see a shadow on the ground, like it was up a little bit, right? Or at least what we're Color graded again, boom. Um, then, where are they? I added in some of my own meteors. Um, and I had looked up a couple pictures of them to see like the general shape that other people use for meteors. And what I did for these, if I can open this up, is, ah, oh, these are my glow layers, okay. Um, to make a meteor, I started with just, a hard round brush, painting full white, just like that, on a single layer. Um, and then I converted this to a smart object, went to filter, liquify, took my blur. I think I probably made it bigger than this before. But then you just use your um, forward warp tool and you can just draw from here and draw out 
a tail on your meteor and then it gives it a nice smooth shape. Um, so then you've got that type deal. I went and blurred those pretty good with filter. I think I used field blur. No, I didn't. I used um, I think I used a Gaussian blur initially. Yeah, that just like 7.6 is what I used. Seemed to look about right for what I was going for. So it did 7.6. Then blur gallery, path blur. This is how I got the like motiony type look. Um, so under path blur, you can start your point here. You can have it shoot back this way. Um, and you can up your endpoint speed. Make it taper a bit better. And then you can see your before and after. It just gives it a bit more of a like streaking shooting type look. Um, so that's how I got those meteors. I what did I do for a blend mode on those? I set those to screen and then turned down the opacity of them so they'd um, blend in a bit nicer let the overall image not stand out too much. And then with this meteor, I when you resize these, it resizes like from the initial ball shape that you have. Um, and then the tail gets kind of weird once you apply that. Yeah, that doesn't look weird. Um, so what I ended up doing was just rasterizing this and then I was able to scale it nicely a bit. Um, and that's how I did my meteors, just duplicated that a couple times, made them different sizes. Um, and then I have a glow feature that I do too, that I made right here. But if I hit that, it makes it glow a bit better. And with that, then I'm able to turn down my opacity more. And then it gives it more of that hot white look. Um, then we can flatten all those, and we've got that whole meteor right there. Put it back to screen, turn down our opacity, and we've got a meteor. So there is that. So that's the meteors. I saw that there were these little like weird holes on this and I was like, I'm gonna put lights on that. <laughs> um, so I did, I just took a like, soft round brush um, with an edge of, it's like 10, zero to 10% somewhere in there. Um, and just dabbed on each of those spots. Tried to get them to line up nicely. Um, that was too much. So this is my Initial spots, my opacity is at 29%. That's each of the spots themselves. This, my light layer has a color of light too to make them blend in a bit better. Um, but that's my initial dots, and then I did my glow feature, and that turned on the glow for them. Um, but I thought that was a little too much, so I went with just that right there. So I guess I can get rid of these. Um, and then initially they didn't match the best and they looked a little strange, I thought. So I added this bit of um, color, over, color overlay, just a little bit of a bluish type color, um, which I guess works. I don't entirely know why I did that, but those are the lights for the building. I wanted to add some effects to the front of it to make it more like spacey, more dynamic looking. Um, so I found first this uh, like glittery type deal that will, no, no, no. Um, that's this right here. And then I just put that over it. I masked out. I didn't want it to apply to those certain spots. These little ones right here are where it had strange little sparks that showed up in weird spots in the image, so I took those out. Set this to screen so it only lets through the brighter bits, um, and you can see that adds a little bit of a nice 
in the foreground type effect. Um, and I gave that a blur as well so that those aren't super harsh. Like you can see this one here, that one there, this one here. When I turn on my filter, those look a lot more natural um, and they fit with the depth of field a lot better. We've got our little glitter pixel things there and then I added in these sparks that I found. That was a cool one. Um, it's just this type image right here and just masked those office foot and my wheel a little bit just because they were a little too much there. Again, set this to screen because if you leave it as normal, it just looks weird. Um, screen is the best mode for glowy type light effects that you had. Um, left the opacity 100%. It looks a bit off right now just because my crop is not what I did for my initial crop. So we can fix that here. see it anymore. And bring my filters. Please render. Copy. Oh, so good. Alright. So we've got that. We've got our cool sparks. I like that. I didn't like how bright they were, how orange they were. Um, so I took a hue saturation there, took the saturation down. That helped them blend a lot better with the whole image. That's with and without the sparks. Um, We'll call that group effects, and we can toggle those on and off, and we can see what that did. I also liked these because I felt this side of the image and this base of the image down here were too dark um, for the overall shot, and I feel like it helped balance it a bit better when I added those. Um, this up here could have maybe been a bit darker to help lead the eyes, like from bright spot to bright spot, and like lead you through the image a bit better. Um, but I liked the like hot, warm, Marsy look that that gave it. And then did some global dodging and burning to the whole image with some tone curves. This one's my burning. This one's my dodging. I just took it up, took it down. Um, for my dodging layer, what I did was to get this. Oh, you can see my crop is still not what it was for my original. <laughs> um, to get this right here, what you do, because all these white bits are what will show up in my brightening. So I'm applying a brightening layer. I'm telling it to affect only these brighter spots. As it goes more dim, it affects it less. As it's black, it affects it none. Um, so how I get that nice smooth global effect is you go here under channels for RGB. This is the brightness of the reds, greens, and blues. Um, and you can see if you turn off all but one, this is just the brightness of the blues right there you can see. That's just the brightness level of the greens. And that is just the brightness level of the reds. And you can see this image has a lot of red in it. Um, so if we turn all of this on, that's the brightness of all of them, we can right click on this to select it. And that selects all of the brightest spots. Um, not the brightest, but the brighter spots. Um, and then if you hold Shift, Alt, and click again, Control, Shift, Alt, and click again, it'll decrease the size of your selection. Um, and then you can use that to mask out your stuff. And then you apply that, and you can do the same. A little bit more difficult for the burning layer, for the darks. So to select the darker bits, hold control, click on your layer. Um, I'm going to expand my brighter spots and then invert my selection so that I'm affecting more of the bright stuff and less of the darker stuff, and then I'll invert it so that I'm selecting, ending up with the final selection of the smaller amount of darker stuff. So we hold Control and click on that to select it. Hold Control Shift, and you can see that little plus sign comes up and we can add to our selection. That increases the selection. We hold Control Shift I, and that inverts it. So now we have that lesser amount of darks, 
And then we can use that to create our mask for this by going select mask. And then you can see that it affects only the darker areas right there. Um, so that's our like global dodging burning. Adds a bit of nice contrast and pop. I like looking at my images from a little small preview so then I can see like the whole thing. Is it overall a nice image? Whereas here you get caught up in details too much. Um, I guess it's worth pointing out that I did add um, an oil paint filter to my car because the background image looks more wavy, greasy, painty type look. Um, so I went into our smart filters and you can see the effect that's without it. That's with it. It gives it a little more softer, like artsy animated type look. So if we open up this oil paint effect, we can see um, how much we're affecting it. I have 1.1 and nothing. If we up our stylization and our cleanness, that'll go to town on it. Um, the cleanness is basically how smoothly the lines flow together. So you can see up here, everything's just like milky smooth. The stylization affects how much of the effect you're putting on, so just a little bit. I had mine at like, what, 1.1? And then I brought the cleanliness down all the way, so it gives it just a little bit. Um, because if you bring your stylization up, then everything gets too blurred out. So I went to 1.1, used that, and that's how I got that bit of, uh, that softer, more art painted type look. Um, and then I did, if you come up to your very top layer, I'm gonna show you how I made this one here. You hold Control, Alt Shift, E, it does a stamp visible, so then it makes, um, right now, I, if you hold Alt and click on the eyeball, it shows only that layer. Um, so you can see now I've made an entire individual image of the whole thing. And then I converted this to a smart object by right clicking, convert to smart object. And what I did with this one overall was I added some extra filters to it to give it a more finalized, complete look. Um, so we'll walk through these here. So I started with a camera raw filter to get that. You click on your layer as a smart object, you go up to filter, uh, camera raw filter, um, and that basically brings up Lightroom within Photoshop and you can work on it there. Um, let's see, what did I do here? I just hit auto for that, honestly. <laughs> took up the clarity a little bit to give it a more fine detail contrast, took down the texture to take out some of the graininess, took down the dehaze a bit to give it more of a glowy type effect. This is what it got with auto. Gave it a little bit of a boost in tone curve, just to the brights. Um, didn't do anything there, didn't do anything with my HSL, added a bit of split toning. And we can see before and after the split toning a little bit of effect that made just from adding in some more um, of this like bluish tealish color in the shadows and then a little bit of it in the highlights because I have this focused fully over there right now. Um, messed with the blue primary a little bit just seemed to give it a bit more of a overall warmer look so I boosted that up a smidge. That's how we got that. Um, so that is our before and after the camera raw filter. I added an additional oil paint layer here. Um, the same exact one that I did before, and this was more so just to meld these two, the car and the image itself together to kind of blend them smoothly. Did an unsharp mask to give it a bit of sharpening. That looked nice. And then I added a final color lookup table over the whole thing to give it a bit more color contrast. And for this, I believe it's... Uh, no, I don't remember which one this is. Come on. This is Late Sunset, is my color.
color lookup table that I added there at the very end. And that is how we went from just this, this stock picture of a car <laughs> to that final image. And there we go. Um, on my Instagram story, how I did the little effect on the text was, I can simulate that here a bit. Um, that is massive. Let's not do that. So I took my text, I called it called it Explorer. I had this somewhere like over here. You know, let's go back to our goal. Let's clear our ratios. Let's go back in here. Back in here. This is the one that I exported for Instagram more so minus these harsh edges here. We'll let that render out. Um, so I have this text here, and I used two of these duplicates. My first one in the background I had as a brighter color, and I actually matched it to um, these brights right here, so there's a little bit of a yellow tinge to it. Um, and then this upper one I matched to something over here, so it had a bit of a darker tinge to it. Is that? And you can use the eyedropper tool inside the text color picker in Instagram to do that. And then I just moved this one up a bit from it. It was like maybe off to the side a smidge. And that's how I got, uh, it wasn't that And that's how I got that um, 3D-ish type look to it. There's that. And then I just added another text layer down here. a different font, it was a lot smaller. But then I put that there and again color matched that to something over here. And there we go. Minus these harsh edges here because I took those out for the Instagram story one. But there we are. Let's see if I can get rid of this motion. finish. Um, if you have questions on how I did any of my layers for that, if I walked through anything too quick, you let me know um, down in the comments below or on Instagram and I can get back to you. And yeah, if you like this type of video, let me know um, and I can make some more like this. If you have ideas for other things you'd like me to um, try and create for you as well that you'd like to see, also let me know and I can make something for you. Um, if you have some images you want me to put together, send those my way and I can um, try and get those mashed up into something nice for you. Other than that, I think that's about it. I'm going to peace out, and until whenever the next video is, I will see you next time. We out. And now, for bloopers. Oh, I don't like this. I can stop my recorder. Stop recording. And now, 
we open Da Vinci Resolve. Ah, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. That's down below. Comments, you can write things. Like say, hi, how are you? Or, dude, that was pretty dull. Or, oh, okay, that's an epic. I want to name one like that. Or, hey, can you do one with my cat? Things like that.